What's the tea, everybody? This is your girl, Luscious Massacre. I'm feeling the summer vibes. I'm giving you citrus, orange, mandarin, girl. I'm giving you a little Charmander and a little Fennekin. I think that's that Pokemon's name, girl. Who is that Pokemon? I'm actually very excited to be bringing you this video because I actually took a little bit of a hiatus. I was feeling a little sick. I actually had like the stomach flu. So I was going through the gigs, girl. It just took a toll on me and I wasn't able to shoot any videos. So I'm glad I'm back and bringing you all this homosexuality all this gayness to YouTube, honey Actually while I was sick I posted on my Instagram and I asked if you guys had any questions for me I wanted to do a video where I just kind of like just answered fan questions I do feel like my little family that I've built on YouTube so far You guys have been so supportive and like you guys are following me on Twitter I recently started a Twitter and I already have like 600 followers You guys have been very engaging with me on Instagram on Twitter, on Facebook. I see your little comments, girl. All the little Nancy Drews are out there. They're like, where's Luscious? Miss Luscious, where are you? Where you been, girl? And I, girl, I feel like Carmen San Diego, girl. Where on earth is Luscious Massacre, girl? And I'm over here, girl, going through the gigs at home, honey. She can't get no dick, girl. I, mean, I haven't even gotten pounded, girl. <laughs> So I was going through the gigs. I posted on Instagram that I wanted to do a answer fan question video. So you guys sent me a whole bunch of questions. So I'm going to read through the questions. And I'm just going to be as honest as I can. And you know me. I am not afraid to spill some tea. She can't get no tea. If I got to spill the tea, it's gonna the tea will be spilt, honey. <laughs> This comes from Josie and it says, how did you and Rich Lux meet? Uh, and can you change your name to Lasha, 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 Girl, you tried it. I am not changing my name. Uh, I, I don't even know how this whole Lachuchus mess started. Like, seriously, I'm shook, honey. My vagina is shook and quivering, girl. My booty hole is puckering. <laughs> I still don't understand how this caught on, and now everybody just calls me Lachuchus. I'm shook. She can't get no dick. No, my name's Luscious Massacre, girl, because... She got them luscious lips, okay? I did a collab with Rich, I want to say maybe like a month and a half ago. I was on his channel, and we shot a video, and then it, everything went fine, smooth, copacetic, everything was cute. The video was very well received, it was hilarious. We were talking about like the whole Manny MUA Jeffree Star drama, and then somebody in the comments, they said, I love La Chuches. And I think the person, I don't remember who it is, I think he was trying to spell luscious, and he just spelled it La Chuches. I was shocked. It was hilarious. I was laughing. So then we shot another video the next day and then I said, I was like, girl, y'all are so shady. Somebody commented La Chuches in the, in the comments. Somebody called me La Chuches. And then after that video, once that video was posted on YouTube, everybody just kept going at it and they started calling me La Chuches and then they started calling me Leche. And then now, like, it's so crazy. Like, now my fans, like, and I, it, it just, it cracks me to even say that because I don't even feel like I'm there or at that level. But, like, I feel, like, I literally, I'm creating a little fan base and they're calling themselves the Leche Crew. Literally my name is Luscious but then people started calling me Lechuches and then everybody started to like intentionally mispronounce and misspell my name. They've called me La Chucha girl. They're calling me La Cheche honey. They're calling me Miss Leche. So then now my fan base is calling itself the Leche Crew and I'm actually here for it. Like I'm actually living for it. Like I saw, I've seen a couple of people comment that they're part of the Leche Crew of like my little fan base I guess like and I'm shook I'm like girl where is this even coming from it's hilarious I feel like Lady Gaga girl I got little monsters girl but they're called the Leche Crew girl anyways I've gone on this whole tangent about this damn name I live for it I know everybody does it it's coming from a place of love it's coming from a place of fun I know they're not laughing at me they're laughing with me because it doesn't bother me I think it's hilarious it's like a cute little pet name they're calling me La Chuches. but no I will not be changing my name to La Chuches, girl you tried it Every Every single way you guys spell it, say it, as long as it's not coming from a place of shade and it's coming from a place of love, I welcome it. Now, the first part of the question, girl, I went on this whole tangent, but the first part of the question is how did me and Rich Lux meet? I think Rich and I met probably, I want to say, about five 
like four and a half, maybe five years ago. And it's so funny because like when Rich and I first met, I was performing or I think I was out. Like I just went out with my friends. And the thing with me is I only do the entire Luscious Massacre fantasy, like the entire get up, wig, drag, costume, everything when I'm performing. If I'm not performing, I still love makeup so much that I still go out in makeup, but I will usually do a little club kick fantasy. What I mean by that is I experiment with my makeup. So I will do weird eyebrow shapes or I'll do weird designs on my face. You know, I always try to play with different colors, different shapes, and I just love going out on makeup. I feel like makeup is like one of the true loves of my life. When I first moved to Houston about six years ago, I started going out and performing, you know, at places like TC's, places like F Bar. That's where I met one of my really, really close best friends, Charles being Sir Barge. We're going to F Bar. I was out with Charles and then I ran into Rich and he just like, he screamed, you know how he is, and he like screamed, he's like, ah! And he came over and he's like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm meeting you luscious. I'm such a huge fan of yours. He was so different back then, by the way. He was so not like crazy, like outgoing and like this crazy personality. Like he didn't use words like clock at the house. He didn't use words like not bothered. He didn't use any of this, of this gay lingo. Like I feel like he was still very like the macho straight gay dude. Like he was already gay and he had you know, he was already out and gay and everything, but he wasn't like a crazy homosexual. Ah! I don't know how it happened. I think he like, we met in person and he was the sweetest, like the sweetest guy. He told me he was like my number one fan. He told me he was like my hu my biggest fan. He told me I, and I'll never forget this because till this day, like we always talk about it. He was so like, he, he was having such a fangirl moment. And then he was like, you are the definition, the definition of drag to me. Girl, he was literally like the first member of the Leche crew. Like he was my first number one fan. Man. Like I, he, I was shook. I think the next day, like he messaged me on Facebook, and then he said, "Hey, do you want to go out? Let's hang out." And I was like, I was at home, you know, I wasn't doing anything, and I was like, "Oh, sure, girl, let's, you know, let's do something." And he came, like he lived in Pasadena, I was living in Houston. In the area where I was living, he was probably like a 45-minute drive. He drove all the way from Pasadena over to my house, picked me up in his mother's Escalade. Girl, she was pulling a stunt because at the time she told me it was her Escalade. When she came, picked me. Up, I was like, oh girl, oh honey, Miss Rich has an Escalade girl. She got coins. She came pick me up. She took me out to Montrose. You know, Montrose is the neighborhood in Houston because Houston has its own little neighborhood, like its own little gay city. It's called Montrose. So we went to Montrose. I remember we went to Bayou, and our chemistry was just like it was explosive. Like we literally, and I, and I'm not even like I'm not exaggerating. And he knows this because we've talked about this before. The day we met, like we became best friends the day we met like it's crazy we became inseparable from the day we met like we were inseparable like we were always we were talking on the phone 24 7 he would come over and stay over at my house for like four days at a time and then he would go back home so he could work and then whenever he was off because he, he would work like three or four days and then he was off for like three or four days so then when he was off he was always at my house like he would come over and he would literally stay over and from the moment we would wake up we would go to the mall we would go shopping we would go eat we would go here we would go there like we were inseparable and then when he was at work because he worked overnight we would be on the phone all day so literally it was a 24 7 7 days a week type of friendship like we were we just like understood each other our chemistry was just insane it was nothing but laughter kiki cutting up throwing shade having fun i feel like i rubbed off on him certain things about me a lot of my gayness my eccentricities but a lot of his confidence rubbed off on me because i will say rich he is like one of the most confident people that i know like he is the kind of person that he can go up to somebody in the middle of the club and be like hey i like you what's your phone number like that is rich like literally that is rich lux and i'm not like that i cannot go up to somebody and be like oh honey i think you're cute give me your phone number like that's not me i'm not that girl and rich has like in a in a certain way he's pushed me to be a little bit more confident because that's just who he is naturally i don't want to go into more details girl because i can keep talking about our relationship and the things we've been through the things we've done the things we've experienced but girl that is a whole long video can you go over the drag queen dictionary it took me a while to figure out what trade
viewers, I am going to be doing a video on drag queen lingo or gay lingo, but I actually already shot one with Rich Lux. While we were in Las Vegas, we shot a video talking about like gay lingo 101. So if you guys wanna see that video, I know Rich is sitting on it. He told me he's gonna be releasing it at the end of the month, but go over there and bug her girl. Go and leave her some comments. Go, go on her Twitter, go on her Instagram, go on her YouTube and tell her that you guys want him to release that video. Girl, it is hilarious. It is one of the funniest videos I've ever done with him. We literally go down the list of the gay lingo. Some of it that we have literally created throughout the years. A lot of you guys have barely discovered that lingo. We have been using that stuff for four or five years. Like we have been using those words for a very long time before YouTube even happened. When are you going to do another mukbang with your roommates? How old were you when you first dressed in drag? Well, actually I was just texting with Aeon. We should be shooting a mukbang either today or tomorrow. So that is gonna be coming actually very soon. It's very hard with our schedules to get us uh, one day where we can all get up and drag and then like just uh, dedicate that moment to shooting a mukbang. It's actually very difficult because we are all very busy women. But we will be shooting one very soon, I promise. The girls are really excited. I love shooting videos with them because we have really good chemistry and I know that a lot of you guys have been asking for them. So there is a mukbang coming actually very soon and it's gonna be me, Aeon, and Luna. We will be shooting a mukbang. So keep an eye peeled for that. And then the other part of the question was how old were you when you first dressed in drag? So I'm 29 years old right now. I first did drag, if I'm not mistaken, when I was 23. So 24, 25, 26, 23, 29. Oh my God, I've been doing drag for six years. Actually, I'm not gonna lie, no shade. The first time I did drag was when I was 22 on Halloween. Divina Garza, she put me up in drag for Halloween. I was 22 years old. I, I actually dressed up as Lady Gaga and I did a Halloween costume contest and I came in second. Girl, I should have been first but the shade is real. At Valentino's here in Brownsville, Texas, I did a Halloween costume contest as Lady Gaga and I came in second place. But even though I came in second place, I hated my makeup. Girl Divine, she made me look like a total transvestite. No shade to the transvestites or the cross dressers out there. But at the time, Divine, she tried it. The makeup was horrible. And from that moment on, I swore if I ever got in drag, I was gonna do it by myself and I would be doing my own makeup. So that actually that trauma that did Divine put me through, it pushed me to start doing makeup by myself because I didn't do drag for an entire year. So from that October till the next October, so when I turned 23, a Halloween of that year, I did drag for the second time and I did my makeup by myself. And I was already swearing, I was painting. I saw I was the most beautiful, most sickening makeup artist in the whole land, girl. And we went out on Halloween, we went out and had fun. And I was looking like all kinds of bows of the clown, but I swore I was beautiful and I did my own makeup, but that the fact that Divine traumatized me, it pushed me to create Luscious and Massacre as she is known today. So I have to give a shout out and I have to give a, a girl, she, Divine Garza, Divina Garza is responsible for the inception of my drag birth because she traumatized me when she put me up in drag. I was so shook. I was like, honey, I need to do my own makeup going forward. And then that is when that I fell in love with makeup and I just started creating these weird looks. I started going out as a club kid because at first I wasn't doing drag. I told myself I'm not going to do drag until I'm beautiful. When I first started, I was only going out as a club kid. I was doing all kinds of weird Bowie Gaga inspired looks. I was very the monster girl. I was very the little monster. So I was doing a whole bunch of weird looks. I was very inspired by Lady Gaga, David Bowie, all that kind of drama. I was doing the most and that's how I started doing drag. Pros and cons of living in the RGV. Now for you guys who don't know, the RGV, it just means the real Grand Valley. It encompasses pretty much this whole area where we live in, which is like McAllen, Harlingen, Brownsville, Edinburgh. There's so many cities far, Mercedes, Girl, I don't even know, I don't even know the entire, I don't even know how far the RGV reaches, but it is the real Grande Valley. Pros and cons. The pros for me are being close to my friends and being close to my family, most of all. Uh, I have my mom, my dad, my three brothers, they all live here, uh, and I get to see them almost every day. I have a little brother who's eight years old, and I get to be a part of his life. I get to see him grow up, and I get to be an influence in his life. And I also get to normalize my queer experience to him, you know, because I 
I don't want him to grow up and you know not really know that side of me which is a huge part of my identity so that's definitely a huge pro some of my closest friends uh, live here in the valley I do have a lot of friends who live in Houston as well you know I did live in Houston for five years so it's a little bittersweet that I don't live in Houston anymore because some of my closest dearest bestest friends live in Houston and I don't get to see them every day and I don't get to talk to them every day but I, I think right now for this moment in my life being in Brownsville is like the perfect it's just the perfect moment for me to be here uh, the cons is the fact that we don't really have any gay venues here this is such a small town and I've always said that living in Brownsville it feels like I'm five years we live five years behind the rest of the country because you know there's no gay club here right now we don't have a gay venue we don't really have a gay safe space where we can go and hang out and be comfortable and express ourselves through drag or just express ourselves as gay people and right now I feel like we are back we got set back into the dark ages if we want to go out and drag we have to go to straight bars if we want to go out and just be gay in general we have to go to straight bars and as you guys know straight bars are not always as nice or as friendly and it doesn't always feel as safe or as comfortable so that I think that's one of the reasons why it's so imperative to have a gay club or a gay bar in your city where you can go and hang out and socialize and make friends and you know go out and, and have fun there's no real place where we can meet and socialize and, and hang out the only bright side to that is that you know me Aeon and Luna we live together so we actually host a lot of gay nights we host movie nights we have our friends come over you know on Thursdays we were hosting a drag race viewing party and everybody would come over and my entire living room would be filled of just all of our closest friends coming over my living room would just be packed you know everybody would be sitting on the sofas some people would sit on the floor and we would just hang out and then sometimes we do game nights we play monopoly we play loteria girl so it's actually kind of been a blessing in disguise because it's removed the club scenario and it's really made us it's made our moments where we get together a little bit more intimate and we get to kind of like get to know each other a little bit more so it's actually been really cute i feel like my home is like a little gay paradise we live in a little gay gay utopia gay paradise type of environment where we all can hang out and be gay do drag have our gay friends over and just feel safe feel comfortable and we're so lucky to have that because i know that a lot of queer gay kids here in brownsville they probably don't have that a lot of gay kids here probably feel very lonely and they feel very lost because you know they don't have anywhere to go and they probably don't have a lot of gay friends so that kind of makes me sad if anybody lives in brownsville shoot me a message shoot me a dm girl whenever i have game nights i will invite you over to my home you guys can come over and we can hang out get to know each other this place is a gay gay safe haven for everybody and you can come over and meet all the girls you can meet the queens maybe we can put you up in drag too you never know you never know girl what inspired you to get into makeup any certain person definitely season one of RuPaul's Drag Race Nina Flowers Yara Sofia those two queens were one of my biggest inspirations when I first started doing drag I have to give credit where credit is due I fell in love with their makeup and I just felt like they were so different and they just I, it, it's something about them just drew me to what they were doing and I was very inspired by them when I first started your first drag show tell me about your first drag show South Padre Island Divina Garza booked me for a show and I did Lady Gaga's government hooker I still remember that. Shuck! I can't even, I can't even deal. Like, I was such a booger. I'm telling you, everybody starts as such a booger. I started, girl, there was literally no spotlight. I didn't even have any pads on. I looked like a hot mess. And I did Lady Gaga's government hooker. I swore to the heavens that I was Lady Gaga, honey. I was such a booger. How do you feel about being on YouTube and having your life be exposed to the whole world? I mean, honestly, when it comes to my life, I feel like I'm an open book on social media. I've been on social media for so many years already. I do feel like being on YouTube though, it's been a little challenging because you really have to look at it as you too. It's all about you. It's been a little challenging thinking about what kind of content I want to make because I want to do a little bit of everything. I want to do reviews. I want to do tutorials. I want to do story times. I want to do more personal videos where I just turn the camera on and I just talk about random things. I want to do mukbangs. I don't want my channel to just be one note. Like honestly I'm having a real moment right now and I'm sharing with you. A lot of the times I do feel very lost and I'm like what am I doing? But I do feel like I just have to be confident in myself 
I have to trust my instincts and I just have to keep pushing forward and I just have to keep bringing you all different types of content. I want to encompass a little bit of everything and do a little bit of everything because girl, I have opinions about everything. So I want to be able to share that through my channel. If you could say one sentence that would be heard worldwide by everyone in the world, what would it be and why? I would say that you are not alone. And the reason why I say that is because I feel like right now, especially a lot of people on YouTube, they're opening more about their mental health issues or, you know, if they're having a mental illness. A lot of YouTubers have been opening up and talking about their depression or their anxiety. And I can definitely attest to the fact that, you know, I've definitely dealt with depression and I've, I've dealt with anxiety as well. I really never knew depression or anxiety when I used to live here in Brownsville, but then when I moved away, I started to know what depression feels like and I started to know what having anxiety feels like and going through those kind of things. And even if you have your family, even if you have your friends, a lot of the times you can feel very lonely. So I my message or the sentence that I would just like to put out there is that Sometimes you just have to remember that you're not alone, even though you can feel completely alone. Most of the times, there's nothing wrong with you. Focus on the positive. You know, if you have your health, focus on that. That's a positive. If you have a roof over your head, focus on that. Just focus on whatever things are positive instead of focusing on the things that are negative. Don't focus on the things you don't have. Focus on the things that you do have. If you're able to have a relationship with your little brother, if you're able to have a relationship with your mother, you know, not everybody has that. Not everybody has their mom to be able to talk to. Not everybody can talk to their dad, you know, whenever they want to, just pick up the phone. So just focus on the things that are in your life. Don't focus on the things that are not in your life. That can really help to cope with a lot, a lot of those feelings. Just remember that it's not at the end of the world. You're not going to die and you're not alone and that's literally my message sent out right now into the world you are not alone would you please consider auditioning for RuPaul's Drag Race been there done that and I will probably do it again who knows how did your Latino family deal with your fabulousness when you came out and started doing drag I was actually really shook my dad took it like not bothered he was not even like he's actually been very supportive like low-key He's been supportive and I thought I was gonna have a, a harder time coming out to my dad. But when I came out to my dad, I was like, hey, I'm queer, I'm gay, this is me. And he was like, okay, you know, I support you, whatever you are. Like, he wasn't even bothered about it, you know? I, and I was, honestly, I was completely ready for any reaction that he would have given me. If he would have blown up and been like, no, I can't accept it, that I would have been like, okay, deuces no tea i'm not bothered if you don't accept me this is who i am i'm not ashamed of it i'm not afraid of it i was completely ready for any kind of reaction and, and i was actually very taken aback when he was like okay it's no big deal i totally i'm i totally support you so that was very eye-opening for me my mom she actually said she's always known since i was like five years old but she was just you know she was afraid and she didn't know how to raise a queer kid she didn't know how to come about it so she actually just waited for me to tell her because she didn't want to pressure me or she didn't want to make me feel some type of way knowing now if you know your kids are gay or if you think your kids are gay from a very early age try to have that conversation with them as early as possible even if you feel like it's gonna make them uncomfortable because eventually you will be able to get through it you will be able to talk about it and you will both be able to process it and you will both be able to become more comfortable with it if you don't talk to your kids at an early age they will internalize rejection they will internalize self-hate they will internalize fear and if you internalize those feelings for you know decades like I did you know I didn't come out to my mom till I was 23 24 years old but she knew since I was five and she never you know she never opened up to me and asked me what was going on and I was so afraid of people finding out so I internalized those feelings for so long that now even though I'm 29 years old and I came out to her like what five years ago I still deal with a lot of the aftermath of those feelings so you know if you have, if you have a gay kid and you're not really sure how to go about it my biggest advice that I can give to you is talk about it as soon as you can don't be afraid to ask your kids because a lot of the times if you ask your kids they're gonna tell you they're gonna tell you and then you guys can just process it and get over it and move on and you can have a kid who is not gonna have to deal with those issues 
and internalize all that trauma. You know, they can deal with it when they're young and then their teen years and their adult years, they, it can be something that they already overcame and they can focus on just being a more together, more healthy human being. What were you like in high school? Oh girl, I there are so many questions. I'm probably gonna have to do a part two to this video. I'm gonna answer this last question and then we're gonna wrap it up. I was a total introvert. I was a 100% introvert. I had no friends. Okay, look, I had friends in middle school. I had friends in elementary. And then in high school, once puberty hit and I started becoming, you know, attracted to the boys and and I could no longer hide my femininity and I could no longer hide my gayness and I was so ashamed of my femininity and I was so ashamed of my gayness I retreated inward and I became a total introvert when I tell you during high school I didn't have a single friend you know I feel like now I can talk about it for a long time I was so like embarrassed about my high school experience I wouldn't like to talk about it at all and I would never share about my high school experience Experience, I would just not even talk about it now I can talk about it in hopes that it can shed a light and maybe help somebody out there who's going through something similar to what I went through I didn't have a single friend I would go to school and from the moment I stepped into my classroom to the end of the day when I walked out and I got on the school bus sometimes I wouldn't talk to a single person sometimes I wouldn't talk to a single soul literally the only person I would talk to was my teacher and that was because I had to ask questions pertaining to the schoolwork or to whatever on a real personal real level I was completely ignored and uh, for the most part I ignored myself and I didn't talk to anybody I shut everybody completely out and it really did have to do with those again those internalized feelings of rejection self-hate shame I was afraid of what the kids would say I felt like most of the kids were very uncomfortable by gay people or you know I felt like almost everybody at my school didn't like gay people so I felt like automatically by default they were ashamed of me or they were like disgusted by me or they didn't like me so I always I was always like Ooh, I did not I was such a people pleaser I didn't want to make anybody uncomfortable so I was always like oh I'm not gonna talk to them I don't want to make them uncomfortable about my gayness so I feel like I was always constantly policing myself and you know tiptoeing around other people girl maybe maybe sometimes like subconsciously I still do it and it's something that I need to get over I'm sure a lot of people can relate or can identify with that it was such a raw spot for me to, to like talk about this for so long but I was literally like that kid at the back of the class that never spoke a word, that had no friends, that no one ever talked to. I was completely invisible in high school. And it's such a shame because, you know, eventually I came out of my cocoon and I became this huge, beautiful butterfly. And now I can talk to anybody, mostly for the most part. Now I have such a confidence that I really do I can attribute to makeup. Eventually, you know, I was able to come out of my cocoon and I can be a fully fledged, confident human being. But for a long time, I wasn't. I was very affected about my gayness. Like, I really rejected my gayness for a long time, especially during high school. And I really regret it so much because I lost a lot of my friendships. And I have so many fond memories of like those kids that I used to hang out with. And I no longer have any type of friendship or any type of connection. I feel like if the kids that I went to high school with they would see me now and they would see how colorful vibrant outgoing and how gay I am they would be like who is this person because I am a total 360 degree I'm a whole nother person but it's because now I have found acceptance I have found love I have found my pride and I'm so thankful for the people that have helped me reach that that have allowed me and helped me to be able to find my confidence and to be able to find my voice because now I have a voice. If I could do high school all over again, I would be so confident. I would be friends with everybody. I wouldn't be afraid or ashamed, weirded out by or, 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 or afraid of anything. I would be able to go up and make conversation and just talk and make friends. I would join more groups. I would help form an LGBT club if I could. I would run for student council president 
president. I would run for prom king. I would run for prom queen if I could. Girl, I would be doing the most in high school. Honestly, if I could do over my high school again, oh, that would be like a dream come true. I would love to do that. I hope that shined a little bit of light on me, on who I am and what I'm about and what I stand for. There were so many questions and I, I clearly, I talked too much, girl. So this is part one. Thank you so much. If you guys like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, all that gig. Turn on the notifications because you know YouTube sometimes tries a girl. YouTube be doing the most. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel and getting all up in this homosexuality, honey. And until next time, bye.